Get your decade ahead horoscope for your sign at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 26, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. Now, in some ways, it's going to feel as if we've dipped back into a Mercury retrograde. I'm sorry to say, but it does happen from time to time. At least twice a year, Mercury speaks with Neptune in a conversation of tension. Now you add to this, Mercury will also stand across the sky from Jupiter as well. And that is going to add to this level of thinking that we know the answer, feeling like maybe there's more that we do need to know but also feeling like our technology might go a little bit wonky, if only for a split second. Now, the area that is actually very promising this week is where it comes to matters of heart and joy. It looks like we are feeling inspired and stable and sure, and it really is just the beginning. And the next week, we'll continue to have beautiful Venusian vibes as well. So let's take it one at a time. Let's start with Mercury because it really is very interesting what Mercury is doing. Now, right around Thursday and Friday, give or take a day on either side, depending on where you are on the planet, that is when these connections between Mercury and Neptune and Mercury and Jupiter respectively will perfect. Now, when you have all the energy this week sort of concentrated towards the later part of the week, it means that we feel the energy building as we move forward and it grows that much more stronger. And it is going to be immediately after that the energy starts to shift. Very likely what's going to happen is that in at least one area of life, we are gonna have that little bit of a Mercury retrograde moment before the energy dissipates very quickly. Now Mercury right now is moving through its home sign of Gemini. And this is a part of the sky. This is a sign that is also deeply connected to communication of all kinds and the tools with which we communicate. It is also the internet that is now considered in our modern world, considered uh, the providence of the sign of Gemini and Mercury. And the reason is because there was a time when the internet and maybe some parts of it still are very Uranian. Um, and Uranus is a planet that has to do with the next technology, with the cutting edge technologies. And it has to do with reaching the masses. And while it is that the internet does help us to do that, now it has become so much ingrained, so much a part of our lives that when we look at our daily lives and the things that we use to connect with each other, the ways in which we connect each with each other, that's when we look to Mercury. However, whatever the new and next technology is gonna be, that's where we look to Uranus. And we can still look to Uranus a little bit in a supporting kind of way when looking at our uh, machines that we are using and how it is that we are carrying out the things that we need to do, how it is that we are connecting with each other. And so when you have this type of connection that astrologers call a square taking place between Mercury and Neptune, Neptune is strong as well in its home sign of Pisces, while both of these energies are already quite uh, more dominant than they might otherwise be because they are in their home signs, speaking with each other, it means that in some ways they are strengthening each other's vibe that much more and are going to be felt that much more. They're both coming to the conversation from a place of strength. And so what we have here is all of us are going to find ourselves in sometimes mysterious ways, in sometimes uncertain ways, dipping into a moment of uncertainty. Now with Jupiter standing across the sky from Mercury simultaneously, it's like we're able to find a balanced perspective. It's like we're able to remove ourselves just a little bit when we need to. But at the same time, when it is that Mercury stands in opposition to Jupiter, it represents a time when we're very hopeful, perhaps uh, very idealistic, perhaps overly hopeful, overly confident, overly idealistic. And I don't think there's anything wrong with being overly confident. Sometimes a situation actually can be made better as a result. But when you have energy like this, it's almost like there's a little bit of a disconnect between what it is that you feel could be the absolute perfect outcome and where it is that you believe yourself to be. And it may not necessarily be an accurate assessment. So the way to navigate forward from here, 
ultimately is to be patient and to give each other lots of leeway, lots of space to navigate this time well, to understand that what you are understanding uh, may not necessarily be rooted in what is factually true. Now we are going to want to watch this in terms of the collective as well. The sign of Gemini and the planet Mercury both oversee um, what we are talking about as a collective, including in the media as well. When we've got uh, Neptune speaking in this way, uh, it could be that what we are discussing is either, uh, it's like there's key details missing, uh, or it could just be that it is not accurate. And so these are some things we're gonna have to be mindful of as we move forward uh, this week. But of course, like all things, when we have these periods where maybe we're not sure or we don't realize, you know that clarity is right around the corner. And when is that clarity coming? Next week. Early next week, we're going to have a new moon in the sign of Gemini. We are going to have Mercury change signs and speak in harmony with the Uranus before next week is over. And what is so uncertain and so confusing now to the point where we may not even realize that it is not rooted in accuracy. Well, that will be the area that is most likely to surprise us once we navigate into next week. Now, I would also add, this is not the time to be making any kind of big commitments, important decisions, um, especially with things like contracts. When we have Mercury speaking with Neptune in this way, it is very possible that there are key details that probably are important that we are overlooking. Um, it is also possible with the way Jupiter is speaking uh, with Mercury this week that we are seeing things much more optimistically than they actually are, that we are seeing with the eyes of hope, uh, we are seeing the potential rather than what is showing itself to be true for us. I feel like there is so much promise in the sky, but in order to really make an accurate assessment of what that promise could be, we have to get further into next week. Now, of course, if you are where it is that you are and you don't really have a choice, you've got to embrace the opportunities uh, as they come and you feel like there are certain deadlines, then of course you want to trust your life. But if you can give yourself that little bit of leeway, once we get into next week, even a situation that felt so certain now can look very different and can feel as if it evolves in ways that we may enjoy, we may feel uh, enlivened by and liberated by as well. Now, the area of the sky that has some truly promising energy this week is Venus. Venus will first speak in harmony with Neptune right around Thursday, right around Friday, speaking in supreme harmony with Saturn. Now, again, this is only the beginning. Next week, Venus will speak in supreme harmony with Pluto. So we're sort of carrying this energy forward towards the end of the week and into next week as well. It is Venus now that is strong in its home sign. Uh, speaking in harmony with Neptune, that energy is so inspired, it is hopeful, it is being swept up off our feet. And it is that connection with Saturn that allows us a more grounded perspective, that allows us to feel that we are moving towards a longer term future that is revealing itself to us that we have the bigger picture in mind and we're willing to do what we need to and we're able to do it easily to get us towards that future that we are starting to appreciate that we truly do deserve. Now this can also be lasting blessings as well. Venus to the ancients represented love and pleasure and beauty and whatever it is that you acquire as part of creating more pleasure and beauty in your life. Venus has also been associated, especially in modern astrology, with concepts like self-esteem and self-worth. Um, and again, in modern astrology, we see Venus also as an energy of prosperity, uh, speaking to money as well. But of course, first and foremost, you look at Venus in the context of love and joy and pleasure. Um, because this is what has been tried, tested, and true uh, going way, way back as we look at astrological techniques. Now, it is going to be Venus speaking with Neptune. Neptune is a modern planet, right? It's not one of the ancient planets. Yes, it is connected to an ancient god. However, 
being that it is a modern planet, we start to apply that much more of a modern interpretation to Venus speaking with Neptune. It is Venus's uh, connection with Saturn that we can look to for the more uh, traditional understanding of the symbol, given that it is that Saturn is part of the, the original seven, right? Uh, up until very recently, it was that the universe went up to the planet Saturn. Now, not so much. It's like the whole universe and the multiverses are opening up to us more and more as we discover more and more about ourselves and our own potential, the universe reflects that. Our knowing of the universe reflects our self-knowledge back to us. And so looking at that connection between Venus and Neptune, this can be a sense of aspiration, a sense of hope and potential and being swept up in a moment. This is wonderful for musicians and even artists of all kinds. If you're looking to connect with a love that feels like a spiritual love, whether romantically or in your own spiritual practice, this is beautiful energy for feeling like you can take steps to fortify that connection that you uniquely have with Source. There's also a sense here where we are very caught up in a particular moment. And so this sense of being carried away on a moment, on emotion, on possibility, on hope, where it comes to matters of love and attraction, but also where it comes to matters of uh, what we're hoping will create more prosperity for us is also there as well. But it is, as we navigate just a little bit further, it's practically spontaneously, but not quite. But as we navigate towards Friday and the connection between Venus and Saturn perfects, that we're able to take a much more grounded perspective. What starts off as a dream could actually turn out to be better. The reality could be better than anything we could imagine for ourselves. But it does require us to be open and it does require us to embrace the work. With Saturn, anything worth having is worth working for. And that includes in matters of love, maybe the love you want or the love that you have. Uh, sometimes that work is our own inner work. Sometimes it is work within a relationship. Sometimes that work is actually putting in the time so that you can uh, create more financial opportunities for yourself. But this is where the work is gonna show up for us that much more. Because it is that Venus and Saturn both uh, are planets as part of the original Big Seven, well, chances are it is going to be these, uh, this particular conversation that is going to speak most to an understanding of Venus as she has been uh, classically understood, having to do with relationships, with love, and with pleasure. This is understanding what pleasures are worth indulging in and where it is that a little bit of delayed gratification can get you a much better and much bigger payoff than if you decided to just jump fully right in. In other words, this is realizing what's worth the price and what isn't. You know, I'm reminded as I look at this, for every high, there's a low. I think this is especially true if you are a spiritual person and you are learning about yourself through your own emotions, uh, through your own sense of spiritual connection, uh, and through monitoring your own emotions, observing yourself, knowing that it is leading you to a deeper layer of self-knowledge to understand your own reactions uh, to particular uh, people, places, things, situations, knowing that it is by observation that you can actually change your own responses that much more deeply. Well, when you are operating as a spiritual person, then you're able to prioritize that much more to understand what highs are worth it and what are not. Um, where is it that if you indulge, if you decided to uh, spend a lot of money in a particular area, for example, uh, let's say there's something that you really, really want, a splurge that you're really, really going for, um, how do you feel about balancing that with times of uh, some uh, holding back, uh, times of needing to be a little bit more contrite, or times of needing to observe your energy as a way of regulating it? The wise use of our love, the wise use of the energy, uh, pleasure, uh, joy principle 
knowing that there are some joys that are worth diving into and somewhere maybe the cost isn't so worth it. Well, it is this energy that's going to help us to make that distinction. But more importantly, it is going to help us to make choices that allow us to truly feel good about ourselves and that move us towards a grounded sense of love, a true self-respect. What I love about this week for us, it's got to be Venus, right? Venus doing all these beautiful, stabilizing, inspired uh, connections now. Uh, the power players she's reaching out to means that what's happening right now, where it comes to matters of heart, where it comes to our connection, to our own sense of self-value, of self-worth, where it comes to where it is that we allow ourselves to receive and give pleasure, well, we are taking a long-term approach. And in so doing are ensuring that we're not settling for a dream. We're not telling ourselves we have something where maybe we're not sure. We're not settling for what would otherwise just be a fantasy or a hope, but we want the reality to match and we're willing to do the work and put in the time that's gonna get us to that more inspired and loving reality. And in this way, as we walk those steps, as we commit to the journey, we will find a deeper sense of authentic love within and in the world. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? What are you excited about? I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. I'm sorry to my premiere people. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to do a premiere today. And that is because I am at the Norwalk conference. There's a big party going on. I don't know if you guys could hear it in the background, but I sort of slipped away from the party. At the same time though, I'm really very grateful for this moment with you. If you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Of course, the decade ahead video scopes are up on my website. The overview is up on my YouTube channel. I am very sure I have a lot more to say um, because when I made that video, I remember I spoke quite a bit in that video. It's like over an hour long. Um, but even now, and even after I finished recording and, you know, even now as the days continue, I think, oh, wait, what about this? Oh, I can make this correlation as well. And so it really is very exciting to think about the uh, very big and expansive changes that are going to be happening for the collective ahead. So in the near future, perhaps in the near future, um, there may be a follow-up video to the age of Aquarius decade ahead, special horoscope video that you will see on YouTube. But of course, if you want to know how that speaks to you and your sign, you can log on to my website. You can either download the special horoscope or uh, you can access it for free in the superstar space. Now, also, this is the last week that we are going to have uh, the special choose your tuition rate uh, for Synchronicity University for the summer school session that is coming up. We've got lots of really exciting classes that we are going to be looking at uh, and I think that it's going to be such a rewarding learning journey. Uh, I'm so excited for all of you who are going to be joining me again, who've joined me on previous uh, sessions of Synchronicity University and all of you who are first timers and newcomers. Um, I think we're going to have an incredible group. We're going to have a lot of fun together and we're gonna learn a lot as well. So I will be talking and touching on a variety of topics, uh, all based on the feedback that I got from you guys, what it is that you want to see me teach next. And so there is one class looking at childhood in the astrology chart. So this is about getting some insights into your own childhood. Uh, as you explore the astrology chart. The next class will be further strategies looking at forgiveness. The last session, uh, the class we did on forgiveness meant a lot to a lot of different people. And so we'll be diving in a little bit more deeper, going house to house um, to more further examine uh, how it is that we can uh, actually empower ourselves to move towards a deeper level of forgiveness. We'll be looking at happiness and success in the astrology chart. We'll be looking at the midheaven in the astrology chart. And I'll also be doing an introduction to some of the philosophies behind astrological magic. So then 
After these five classes, there will be a bonus class where I get to answer any of your follow-up questions and more. So there's a really incredible journey that we have to look forward to together uh, as part of the summer school. Uh, classes take place Saturdays online. If you can't join us live, no problem. You'll get the download to learn from uh, infinitely. And if you register before the month is over, which means uh, this week, if you register this week, you can take classes at a greatly reduced rate as low as $5 per class. Now, this is the first time I've ever offered anything like this, offering this reduced rate tuition. If it is that you'd like to join me for as little as $5 a class, um, please do log on to synchronicityuniversity.com. You can learn more about the classes and you can register after uh, May 30th. Once we get to June 1st, the prices of the classes will go back to their normal rate of $35 a class. And I look forward to meeting you online in the Synchronicity University space. Of course, I have live events coming up in person. I will be in Baltimore Labor Day weekend, uh, and I will be uh, as part of an incredible astrological cruise uh, that is going to be happening in mid-January 2020. It is a truly transformative love, joy, hope, and transformation uh, journey that we will be taking together. Uh, we will uh, have the port where we will get on the boat <laughs> in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And from there, the boat will port in uh, different places, including Mexico, Honduras, and Belize. And along the way, we will be uh, connecting with a group of people brought together karmically to learn from each other. And we'll have uh, daily uh, seminars and spiritual hands-on healing. We will have astrological seminars. Uh, we will have on-site uh, meditations and so much more, stargazing as well. So we are going to have a lot of fun together and I look forward to meeting you on board. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. I am truly so grateful for it. Thank you so much to all the incredible people who joined me live at Norwalk. I appreciate each and every one of you. I have appreciated all the hugs, all the love. It has meant so much to me. And again, if you want to follow some of the journey that I've been undertaking uh, right here in Seattle, please do join me on social media. All the links to everything I spoke about, the classes, the, the trips, uh, the in-person events, the online events, and social media, all of it are all in the description below. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.